and settings. Men have been active in the creation of Cape Cod, but turbidity currents which scour deeper parts of the ocean floor have not. Which of these rocks could have been deposited in an environment similar to the coast off Cape Cod? Limestone and mudstone are usually deposited in quiet marine settings. Sandstones are more likely to be deposited in a higher energy environment like the coast off Cape Cod. Figure 18.28 represents a hypothetical area during glaciation and after the retreat of ice sheets. This figure depicts landscape features such as the end moraines just described as well as depositional landforms, similar to what might be encountered if you were traveling in the upper Midwest or New England. You will be referred to this figure several times as you read the following paragraphs on glacial deposits. Smart Figure 18.28 Common Depositional Landforms This diagram depicts a hypothetical area affected by ice sheets in the recent geologic past. Drumlin photo courtesy of Ward's Natural Science Establishment, Esker photo by Richard P. Jacobs slash JLM Visuals, Came photo by John Dankward, Kettle Lake photo by Carlin Iverson slash Science Source, Braided River photo by Michael Collier. Tutorial Depositional Glacial Landforms Drumlin Hi there, this is Callan Bentley. Welcome back for another Smart Figure. After watching this video, you should be able to identify, name, and describe the formation of a bunch of different depositional glacial landforms. These are glacial landforms that occur in areas of continental glaciation. Now, if you want to see where continental glaciation is taking place today, you've got basically two big options, Greenland and Antarctica. These two locations are the only places on Earth today where there are ice sheets. However, if you were to go back in time to around 18,000 years ago, you'd find that there were several other major ice sheets, including one that covered most of North America and others in Siberia and Northern Europe. These ice sheets leave behind characteristic landforms that we refer to as depositional landforms because they're made out of glacial sediment. So you can see here over on the far right, there's an end moraine, which marks the furthest point that the glacier made it out to. So we can call this a terminal end moraine. If the glacier retreats a bit, it can leave behind a recessional end moraine as well. And then it can retreat some more and leave behind this big area of ground moraine, which has various landforms in it. You can see some cames here, little uh, piles of till. There are braided rivers crossing this landscape. There are even the casts of old rivers that ran through the glacier. These are referred to as eskers. They look kind of like long snakes crossing the landscape. And there are also drumlins. Uh, drumlins uh, have a big upside down spoon kind of shape steeper on one side and gentler on the other. Here's an example from New York State near Rochester. You can see that there's a bunch of drumlins there. Here's a topographic map depicting those drumlins. Notice how on their northern end, they have very closely spaced contour lines, and that indicates that that's a very steep section. Whereas on the southern portion, the contour lines are more widely spaced apart, and that indicates that it's more gently sloping there. That's basically a way to read ancient ice direction. In this case, the ice was flowing from the north towards the south. Another feature that we discussed were end moraines. Here's a look at the American Midwest. There's two generations of end moraines depicted on this map, an earlier generation in purple, and then that's mostly overprinted by a younger generation, which is shown here in red. Notice that the younger generation tends to parallel the shapes of the Great Lakes. So the shorelines of the Great Lakes are matched by end moraines that are recessional end moraines. So the Great Lakes were carved out, in fact, by glaciers, lobes of that great continental ice sheet. End moraines can also be found in the east. You can see some over here on the shores of New York and New England. OK, let's see which of these you can identify here in this picture. We've taken away the labels now. Take a moment to see what you can spot. All right, so we've got end moraines here. We've got a terminal end moraine over on the far right, and then a recessional end moraine a bit behind it over on the left. There's the outwash, the glacial outwash flowing down these rivers. Okay, little lakes. We didn't mention these lakes right here, but these are called kettles. These are little spots where chunks of ice were left in the ground when the ice melted away, a little hole was left. If the bottom of that hole is below the water table, then you've got a kettle lake. 
You'll notice over here is our esker, this sinuous little trace going across the landscape. Looks like this esker ends in a delta here, probably fed into what was once a lake right in front of the glacier, something like that one there. We've got cames and we've got drumlins. This whole area here is referred to as ground moraine. So hopefully you were able to pick out some of those features. Nice work and thanks for your attention. This has been another smart figure. Drumlins. Moraines are not the only landforms composed of till. In some areas that were once covered by continental ice sheets, a special variety of glacial landscape exists one characterized by smooth, elongate, parallel hills called drumlins, see figure 18.28. Certainly one of the best known drumlins is Bunker Hill in Boston, the site of the famous Revolutionary War battle in 1775. An examination of Bunker Hill or other less famous drumlins would show that drumlins are streamlined, asymmetrical hills composed largely of till. They range in height from about 15 to 50 meters and may be up to 1 kilometer long. The steep side of the hill faces the direction from which the ice advanced, whereas the gentler, longer slope points in the direction the ice moved. Drumlins are not found as isolated landforms but rather occur in clusters called drumlin fields, figure 18.29. One such cluster, east of Rochester, New York, is estimated to contain about 10,000 drumlins. Although drumlin formation is not fully understood, the streamlined shape of drumlins indicates that they were molded in the zone of plastic flow within an active glacier. It is believed that many drumlins originate when glaciers advance over previously deposited drift and reshape the material. Figure 18.29 Drumlin Field A portion of the drumlin field shown on the Palmyra, New York, 7.5 minute topographic map. North is at the top. The drumlins are steepest on the north side, indicating that the ice advanced from this direction. Landforms made of stratified drift. Much of the material acquired and transported by a glacier is ultimately deposited by streams of glacial meltwater flowing on, within, beneath, and beyond a glacier. This sediment is termed stratified drift. Unlike glacial till, stratified drift shows some degree of sorting. There are two basic categories of features composed of stratified drift, ice contact deposits accumulate on, within, or immediately adjacent to a glacier. Outwash sediment, or simply outwash, is material deposited by meltwater streams beyond the terminus of a glacier. Outwash plains and valley trains. At the same time that an end moraine is forming, water from the melting glacier cascades over the till, sweeping some of it out in front of the growing ridge of unsorted debris. Meltwater generally emerges from the ice in rapidly moving streams that are often choked with suspended material and carry a substantial bed load as well. Water leaving the glacier moves onto the relatively flat surface beyond and rapidly loses velocity. As a consequence, much of its bed load is dropped, and the meltwater begins weaving a complex pattern of braided channels. See figure 18.28. In this way, a broad, ramp-like surface composed of stratified drift is built adjacent to the downstream edge of most end moraines. When the feature is formed in association with an ice sheet, it is termed an outwash plain, and when largely confined to a mountain valley, it is usually called a valley train. Outwash plains and valley trains often are pockmarked with basins or depressions known as kettles, see figure 18.28. Kettles also occur in deposits of till. Kettles are formed when blocks of stagnant ice become wholly or partly buried in drift and eventually melt, leaving pits in the glacial sediment. Although most kettles do not exceed 2 km in diameter, some with diameters exceeding 10 km occur in Minnesota. Likewise, the typical depth of most kettles is less than 10 meters, although the vertical dimensions of some approach 50 meters. In many cases water eventually fills the depression and forms a pond or lake. One well-known example is Walden Pond near Concord, Massachusetts. It is here that Henry David Thoreau lived alone for two years in the 1840s and about which he wrote his famous book Walden, or, Life in the Woods. Ice Contact Deposits When the melting terminus of a glacier shrinks to a critical point, flow virtually stops, and the ice becomes stagnant. Meltwater that flows over, within, and at the base of the motionless ice lays down deposits of stratified drift. Then, as the supporting ice melts away, the stratified sediment is left behind in the form of hills, terraces, and ridges. Such accumulations are collectively termed ice contact deposits and are classified according to their shapes. When the ice contact stratified drift is in the form of a mound or steep-sided hill, it is called a came, see figure 18.28. Some cames represent bodies of sediment deposited by meltwater in openings within or depressions on top of the ice. Others originate as deltas or fans built outward from the ice by meltwater streams. Later, when the stagnant ice melts away, these various accumulations of sediment collapse to form isolated, irregular mounds. When glacial ice occupies a valley, came terraces may be built along the sides of the valley. 
These features commonly are narrow masses of stratified drift laid down between the glacier and the side of the valley by meltwater streams that drop debris 